What's good, y'all? Welcome back to Rick Knows Hoops. I'm your host, Tyreek. And the young Celtics stars keep showing improvements. We got a vintage mellow performance. And Steph Curry keeps being Steph Curry. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you guys are new. Um, almost to 100 subscribers. And yeah, it was, a, it was a really good night of basketball. I definitely enjoyed myself. This is one of like the first times I just got to sit down and watch every game. Because, I mean, I don't have like a lot of time at night because I be working and stuff. But this is like one of the first times in a while that I've just got to sit down and watch like a majority of the games. And, you know, most of the games were actually pretty enter entertaining. I'm going to start with the Celtics, though, because, you know, I just got, I got some stuff to touch on about them, man. I'm definitely hypercritical of them because that is my squad. But I like what I'm seeing from not just Jalen Brown, but I really love what I'm seeing from Jason Tatum. Um they're, they're really showing a lot of improvements to their games and not just in the scoring department like they are both having career year scoring but they're just they're playmaking a lot better this season and you know that's just something that you like to see these young these young guys develop is their playmaking abilities because you know last year like Tatum was showing a little bit of progress but it wasn't consistent and Jalen Brown like his scoring made a big jump last season but the main thing was like you know, he provided pretty much nothing turnover. Like, um, I'm sorry, assist wise and um, playmaking wise, like he had a, like a one to one turnover ratio, which is not good. But I mean, this season, even if his uh, ratio is not better, his eye test just seems a lot better. Like tonight, he had a career high ten assists, and he was just making smart plays. He wasn't forcing, you know, any bad shots, and just making plays, reading and reacting, and taking what the defense was giving him. And Jason Tatum has been doing a lot of the same things, especially with Kemba Walker being out. You know the early part of the season now Marcus Smart being out with a calf tear it's um it's been uh you know Tatum he's just pretty much had to take a lot of um responsibility in the playmaking department is what I'm trying to say but I mean he's been stepping it up um big time he had a 10 assist game I believe last week and he had like a couple more like eight nine assist games over the last week or so so he's really been Showing a lot of improvements, and this is a great win for Boston as they beat the Raptors tonight pretty handily. Like, they were up by, like, 20 points in the fourth quarter. Like, you know, Taco Fall was getting minutes at the end of the game, so, you know, the game's pretty much in the hand. But a good win for them because, I mean, they sh they struggled a little bit on their um that mini West Coast trip. They did beat the Clippers, but they lost to Phoenix, and then they lost to Utah. And the Utah game was just kind of like – seemed like they just kind of, like – quit down the stretch. I know Utah is the best team in the league so far this season, but, you know, it wasn't something, you know, um, encouraging to watch from this team, but this is a good bounce back win for them, and it's especially good because Tatum and Brown wasn't even a top two leading scorers. They wasn't even top three either. Um, Semi Ojale had a career night. He had 24 points, hit six threes. That's just something unexpected. And then Peyton Pritchard, who kind of like Emmanuel quickly was somebody taken at the end of the first round who a lot of people said like like why is why is he getting picked in the first round you know everybody saw him as like a mid second round pick but he's shown a lot of great flashes so far this season i would say he's the second best point guard on the roster he's i think he's way better than jeff tig at this point but you know he had a really big game i think he had 20 off the bench and then kimba walker had 21 points and he looked he just looked a little you know smoother um it's good to see kimba maybe get a little bit of his rhythm back he's been playing better of late so that's good to see but yeah shout out to just um jason tatum and jalen brown for continuing to find ways to round their games out all the way and it's going to be a scary sight they get that all-around package man um but this team they're gonna need it um because i just don't think this Celtics team is as good as they were last year and maybe it's just you know injuries and stuff right now but you know just personally i don't think they're as good as they were last year even though tatum and brown have both taken you know major steps you know and add into their games but time will tell with this team it's still early on in the season we'll see where they are you know you know after all the, after the all-star break and all that but you know shout out to those young guys for continuing to improve their games and yeah um for toronto they just kind of came out flat i mean second night of a back-to-back -back, you expect that um they got decent games from Kyle Lowry and Pascal, but nobody else really came to play. So tough loss for them, but they're starting to get it together. So I'm not really too worried about them making that, you know, playoff push. But definitely not the same team from last year. But we'll see as the season goes on. Yeah, let's move to um the Trailblazers and the 76ers. Like I said, classic Melo performance. Uh, 17 points in the fourth quarter for Carmelo, man. And he had 24 for the game, which is a season high. 
and he was just hitting some like big time shots tough shots too like just mellow type shots in the mid post or a, like pull up three with somebody in his face he had one crazy shot off the backboard like end of the shot clock it was you know, a wild sequence you'll probably see it on like house of highlights or something like that but yeah mellow came to play and they needed him they needed him down the stretch because Dane was having a tough time trying to go at Ben Simmons. Um, ben Simmons was doing a great job making it tough on Dane. But then Melo, on the final possession um, for Portland, Melo kind of, he was on the, he was inbounding the ball. And then Tobias Harris had left him to double team Dane because, you know, they don't want Dane to touch the ball. Then Melo passes in quickly, got it back. Then Tobias tried to scramble back, ended up bumping into him. They called a foul. Melo went to the line, sank two free throws. And then possession after that, Ben Simmons threw a turnover on the inbounds pass, which pretty much sealed it. Dame iced the game with a couple free throws. But, yeah, big-time win for Portland. It's the second time that they beat Philly this season, you know, in the last couple weeks. So that's a great win for them. Just want to see this team get healthy and get, you know, more cohesive as a unit because, you know, guys have been struggling for them. Like, you know, Robert Covington, who was a big offseason addition, he's been struggling offensively. But, yeah, you just want to see them get health, healthy with Nur- Nurkish coming back, CJ McCollum coming back. You know, I have higher hopes for this team than what they've shown this season, but still 14 and 10. It's pretty solid considering all the stuff that they dealt with. So big win for them. Shout out to Carmelo for showing that, you know, he can still get it done on this level. And for Philly, I'm tough loss, but Philly's always kind of notoriously notoriously a bad road team. Joel still did his thing. Ben Simmons was aggressive on the offensive side. You like to see that. And Seth Curry still like shooting the lights out. Um I don't think he missed a free throw tonight because he's like he's in the 50 50 100 club right now like 50 percent from the field 50 from three and he hasn't missed a free throw all season yeah he didn't take one tonight so he's still 100 percent from the line this season so shout out to seth curry for being one of the most efficient shooters in the world S- steph curry bro <laughs> that's all steph curry um this is a really good game between the warriors and the magic and orlando did not have a point guard like on their active roster um Cole Anthony was out we know Markel's out they did not have a point guard in their active roster so it was a lot of like Dwayne Bacon and James Ennis trying to initiate the offense Terrence Ross so you know even like for them be, this being a close game should be I guess a success for them even though they're starting to slide on the season now with all the injuries they dealt with but bro Steph Curry he, he's different man he is so different and he's like just one of those few players that are just as dangerous without the ball as he is with the ball like, he just attracts so much attention when he doesn't have the basketball and it's still it's so hard to cover him without the ball and even in ball screen actions like he's just he's super elite with that man he hit another 10-3 game tonight i seen a, a little graphic that says like this is his 17th game with 10 made threes in his career and like the next several guys on the list have like 16 games combined something crazy like that but that just shows you that this is the best shooter of all time like we all know and he's not – I'm not going to say single-handedly because I want to give a lot of shout-outs to these Warrior guys. But offensively speaking, like, he's really been the engine for this Warrior team this season. And, you know, you love to see it because, you know, there are a lot of questions like can he, you know, carry a team into the playoffs, you know, being the main focal point by himself, no Clay Thompson. He's showing that so far this season, you know, it's quite possible. But I want to give a shout-out to, bro, Andrew Wiggins. Hey, every – be everybody be the quickest to throw him under the bus like when he's playing bad or something but i think he's had a really good season even though his like counting numbers may not like be the best of his career offensively he's not taking bad shots he's taking shots within the offense he's making the right plays making the extra passes and then defensively he's been super elite this season bro like really had great games against you know all the top guys i mean probably the only dude that torched him was luca and that's I mean, Luca's going to get his his averages, bro. Like, that's that's the thing. Luca's going to get his averages, and he's due for big games every now and then. But Wiggins has been amazing this season defensively. He's been really good offensively. Just been a, a really good team player. And, bro, Draymond Green, his impact, if you don't know basketball, you're not going to see it. Like, you really have to watch the game to see just the little plays that he makes. Um, he has, like, five straight games with 10 assists, and that's from your power forward. Um, defensively, He's one of the best, like, ever defensively, in my opinion. Like, he just makes so many plays on the defensive end. And it just be little plays, like deflections, like when you need it most, like just to stop a run or something. Like, he just makes those 
smart, intelligent defensive plays. And he always makes the right plays on the offensive side, man. You just like to see that. And, bro, um, Juan Toscano Anderson, <laughs> hey, he, I like his game. He can be like a, a little piece for this Warrior team, like a nice solid role player off their bench. Because he just, he makes a lot of just like, you know, just like, you know, smart plays too. Like makes the extra passes. Like there was the one play where he caught it wide open in the corner, like wide open. But then he seen across the court, Steph Curry is wide open. So he made that extra cross court pass on the money. And then you're going to see him celebrating like before the ball even touched Steph Curry's hands. It was, it was hilarious, but... He made a lot of plays too, and he was doing a good job. He was guarding um, Nick Vucevic, like when they were downsizing, when I'm going to say went small. He had the task to guard Nick Vucevic, and he forced him to miss like two or three shots at the rim, like on consecutive possessions in the fourth quarter when they needed it the most. And Kelly Oubre has been playing a lot better lately too. So you like to see that um, the Warriors are starting to get it together more and more every time I watch them. But yeah, I, you know, for Orlando. It's just tough sledding. I mean, they didn't have a point guard in this game, so <laughs> it's tough because they they held like an eleven. This was a, like a, a crazy like game of runs. Like Golden State was up thirteen early, and then third quarter Orlando went up by eleven, led by like James Ennis had like a, a big game for his standards. He had like seventeen points. Um, Nick Vucevic had like twenty five, but he did struggle from the floor. Terrence Ross. I don't think there's a shot that Terrence Ross doesn't like. Like he's gonna shoot the he's gonna shoot the ball. <laughs> he's gonna shoot the ball. But you know, tough game for them. You know, just missing you know a floor general. But you know, it might be time for Orlando to finally accept the rebuild. But you know, good win for Golden State. Very entertaining game too. I'm gonna be honest. The last two games I tuned into, but I didn't watch as in depth as the the other three I just talked about. But I did watch a little bit of Miami and Houston. It was kind of a boring game, in my opinion. But hey, Jimmy Butler had a one of his best games of the season, maybe his best. He had a triple double in this one, 27, 10, and 10. Just looked a lot better. It was hitting, you know, those pull up mid range jump shots. I think he had a three two, and you know, just playmaking and stuff. And it was an ugly defensive kind of game. PJ Tucker went out. I think he had like a thigh injury for Houston. Just a tough game. They're missing Christian Wood and stuff. Very tough game for them. Um, Bam, but I just like, oh, bro, I love Bam so much. Like, his game, he's like, he's he's a big guard. Like, that's what it seems like. He's just a big guard. Like, his playmaking is second to none at the center position. He's one of the best in the league. And also one of the best defensive bigs that we have in our league, too. Um, just shout out to Bam. I got to say that. And, bro, Max Struss, I hope I'm saying that right. Max Struss. Bro, I don't, I've never heard, I've never heard of dude before, but. I, I was just watching like sparingly. Every time I, I turned my head to the TV, he was making a play. Then I seen him bang on John Wall. I'm like, I was like, who is that? <laughs> I really had no idea who he was, but he was making plays for Miami. But yeah, good one for them. They're starting to, you know, creep closer to 500, 11 and 14 now. So, you know, I expect this Miami team to get back to their identity. They're starting to defend a lot better. Um, Kendrick Nunn starting to, you know, get back into the rotation i feel like i talk about him like every video but he has 16 tonight volume shooter <laughs> he's another guy like he does not see a shot that he doesn't like but good win for miami and then the last game was indiana and detroit um yeah not really too much the bonus um had a big game but indiana has been struggling lately uh, they just were on a four game losing streak so this snapped that to get them back to 500 so that's a team that they're going to have to start getting it, you know, piecing it back together because they got off to a really good start. And since that point, they've really been struggling and losing to some teams that they probably shouldn't lose to. But Sabonis had a big game. Shout out to uh, Pistons rookie Isaiah Stewart for getting his first start of the season. That is a tough task, though, having to deal with Sabonis in your first start. Uh, Jeremy Grant struggled, but I'm not taking anything away from Jeremy Grant. Yeah, it was just ugly game. Like... <laughs> Definitely the worst game of the night, if you ask me. But, hey, Josh Jackson off the bench had 18 points. Just like to see him, you know, playing okay NBA basketball now. I think Dennis Smith Jr. made his debut, too. Yeah, he did. I remember seeing him. I think he's wearing a number zero. He made his debut. He went two for five, Um, only had four points. But I just hope Dennis Smith Jr. can get his confidence back up on the NBA level. And yeah, y'all, that's a wrap for this Thursday night recap. 
Uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you did make it to this point. I'm trying to get to that 100 subscribers real soon. I appreciate your guys' support throughout the process. And I'm going to be back next time with another, with another video, y'all. Peace.